Hello everyone, Charcoal here, and you've probably noticed the channel recently hit 3,000 subscribers. I can't thank you guys enough, and to celebrate I decided to do a little behind the scenes video to go over my process of making the discussion and closer look videos. Let's get started. Step 1, Thinking. First of all, before I can even begin to write a script, I need an idea. A closer look is pretty easy in this regard because it's just picking which tribe I want to cover next. The discussion videos, not so much. When I think of a video topic, I need to be careful not to do something that's already been talked about before, or if it has been talked about before, I need to have something new to say about it. Otherwise, I'm just stealing other people's ideas, which I obviously don't want to be doing. Step 2, Writing. Once I have a topic picked out, writing can commence. This is the part that kills me. That is actually getting myself to sit still long enough to spew my thoughts out onto a Google Doc. What usually works is putting myself in a position of having nothing better to do, like swearing off YouTube or Discord for a while. Putting on a YouTube video as background noise is also effective. Now, you may have noticed that most of my videos aren't exactly long compared to other literary analysis videos, and that's mainly because I don't like to dawdle when I talk about something. I think the odd ones out put it best in a recent video about his own scripting process. He brought up how schools have basically conditioned us to think a super long, drawn out essay is the only right way to write, but in reality, a video will be much more enjoyable if you just get straight to the point. It's less work for the creator and less boring for the viewer. Thankfully, there are no restrictions here on YouTube, so I can be as concise as I want with no needless padding and no teachers telling me I'm doing something quote unquote wrong. Once a script is finished, it contains everything I want to say in the video verbatim. I know there are some people out there who can get by with an incoherent bulleted list, but I can't do that. Especially if the video ends up being kinda long, or if I'm developing a backlog of scripts, there's no way I'd remember everything I want to say. One page of script in Google Docs usually turns out to be around 3 minutes of audio. And speaking of audio, Step 3, Recording. For hardware, I use a Blue Yeti microphone, one of the best on the market, but a little expensive. If you're just starting out or want to save some money, I recommend a Blue Snowball. I also have this nifty microphone arm that I can use to get the mic super close to my face and drown out background noise. For software, I record using Audacity, which is a free program that you can download. Recording requires me to be in a certain mood, or at least not be very tired so I can reach the level of enthusiasm I need for my videos. And small confession, this isn't actually my normal voice. This is just me talking normally, not looking at a script, not really trying to be enthusiastic at all. I swear I don't do this on purpose, but my voice ends up just getting naturally pitched up when I try to be all enthusiastic and happy to be here. Even I never noticed a difference until it was pointed out to me in a voice chat once. Once I hit record, I just pull up my script and start reading. I'll usually do multiple takes or restart if I don't like the way I said something. However long the final video is, it takes about three to four times as long to record it. When I'm done with a section, I apply noise reduction to get rid of even more background noise, trim the audio down to what it's actually going to sound like in the video, and export. Now it's time for the fun part. Step 4, Editing. Ah, uh, editing. A part of the production process loathed by many. But I actually quite like it. It's really fun to have everything come together. I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit all my videos. I create a new project, bring in all the assets and audio I'll need, and then start dragging stuff onto the timeline. All my character stills are drawn in Adobe Fresco, and I get this little bounce effect whenever the expression changes by changing the vertical scale to 110% for a single frame. Pretty much every single character reference I use in my videos comes from the wiki. There's no way I'd have the time or patience to draw all of them myself. Once everything is where I want it, I add in the music and render. Step 5, Finalizing. Once the video is rendered, it's time to upload. Obviously, it's set to private at first so I can add stuff like the title, description, and thumbnail. All my thumbnails are made in Adobe Photoshop, by the way. Now that I have a semi-regular upload schedule, I usually keep videos private until setting them up as a premiere the day before they release. And that's about all there is to say. Time for fan art. As I said in my last video, from now on I'm just picking five of my favorites from the pieces I received between recordings. And today's featured fan art, in no particular order, is from Scarlet, Rave Wings, Jojo Arts, Rhyme, who drew charcoal as a sea wing, and the Lazy Dragon, who made a model of him in Hero Forge. Thank you guys so much, and if you want to submit your own fan art, you can do so in my Discord server. Before I go, thank you all again for 3,000 subs. Really, I never expected to get this many, let alone in such little time. This has been Wings of Charcoal, and I will see you all in the next video.